So with that, I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to Darren, who's going to have a brief opening statement, and then we're going to go into questions. So Darren, uh, go ahead when you're ready. Thanks, Chris. Yeah, good morning, everyone. Thanks for joining us uh, today. Um, yeah, I just wanted to make myself available today to provide general information on the, the latest news that we've had over uh, just before the weekend and give you some context. Um, I won't be able to answer specifics. It's critical that we're respectful of the players' privacy and their legal rights. Um, look, we're still navigating in this COVID landscape and the club's not under an obligation to announce positive tests. That's up to each MLS club. But we felt, given it was our first instance, that we should be as transparent as possible. So that's why I wanted to, to make myself available today. So uh, look forward to your questions. Hey, Darren, it's Doug. Um, are the Can you share if the two players are still resting at home and can you go through the timeline of first test positive, second test positive on the two players? Yeah, Doug, and um, you know, not to get too much into the specifics of um, of the timings. Like I said, we we basically had training on Wednesday last week. Um, out of that, we had two positive tests. Those players have been in isolation. Uh, obviously, weren't in training on Friday. Um, we had negative tests on Friday. And then the hope is we'll have testing today. So out of an abundance of caution, we actually went to um, socially distance training um, since Thursday. And now, you know, if we get a clear test today, that means that we can go back to full team contact training tomorrow. Hey, Darren, it's uh, Jeff Carlisle from ESPN. Um, uh, I'm curious. You know, is there a threshold by which if you got so many positive tests that you would not participate in Orlando? And, you know, is that something that you can share? You know, if, if there is a threshold, what is it? Yeah, Jeff, there isn't a threshold. And I think, look, I mean, just to, to take a step back, I think, you know, the first thing to say here is I think it's showing that the protocols are working. Um, this is something that a lot of the leagues in Europe that are already playing have been going through. Um, I think the other reassuring thing is that it's about making sure through the testing that you're taking place on a constant basis and the, the measures in place that you don't have a um, you know a growth in terms of uh, players that are suffering from you know getting the the COVID. So I think that's the important thing. I mean, there isn't any sort of set threshold. I think from our perspective, you know, we're just now hopefully working towards getting back to full training. And then when we get out in Orlando, obviously Orlando is a slightly different scenario because we are there in a more contained environment at the moment. Whilst we have, uh, you know, the medical protocol that we're following here at the training ground, and you know, we far exceed what the the MLS has in terms of the sort of protocols. We obviously can't control the environment outside of of training. So I think you know that's going to be different when we get to Orlando because we are in um, in a you know so-called bubble as they call it. Um, so I think that'll be a little bit different. But yeah, there's there's no set amount. But uh, you know, from our perspective, clearly the le lesser numbers are better, just because of the impact it has. Darren, okay, thanks. Charles Odom with AP. Um, to follow up on that, um, there have been some numbers, uh, some concerning numbers, coming out of Orange County and the Orlando area. Does that controlled environment you speak of override any concerns you might have about those numbers in Orlando and? Have any players expressed any any concern based upon those numbers? Yeah, Charles, nothing from my perspective in terms of specific concerns. I think look, the reality is that the the procedure for the tournament was, you know, built up over a lot of discussions with all of the medical experts. So whether that's the medical experts guiding the league, the medical experts guiding the player union, uh, that came up with the concept and you know, you've seen that with both. Uh, MLS and the NBA, which is doing a similar type of uh, scenario. I think the reality is what you've got to remember is, you know, within that group, they'll will be heavily tested before we go into that environment. Uh, whilst we're there, there'll be, you know, the social distancing with those employees that are coming from outside. So I think, you know, everyone feels comfortable that that is the, the most appropriate way to deal with it. Hey, Darren, when when is the team planning on traveling to Orlando? And do you have any insight on what the tournament schedule looks like beyond when your your first fixture date is? 
No, Mike, we're still waiting. So we're hoping, I think the league's going to be announcing in in the next couple of days what the actual finalised schedule is. And at that stage, we'll then work backwards from that. But we have to travel in seven days before our first game. So our intention is to be travelling in seven days before our first game when that schedule gets confirmed. Hey, hey Darren. Uh, Justin from Fox 5. I know we're not getting too much into specifics here, but I wanted to ask if you guys have looked into and maybe gotten a handle on how these players may have gotten sick. And the reason I ask is maybe it's instructive for other teams and, you know, having showed up and tested negative twice, it might be kind of puzzling for people on the outside to say, well, how did this happen? Yeah, Justin. So, I mean, look, as I spoke, we're not in a contained environment. So, you know, to our players, no different for people at home. It's about, you know, following the, um, the protocols, everything from the washing hands to, you know, socially distancing to using masks where, um, where applicable. I think that's, you know, the guidance we can give. We've got, you know, no idea. We have sort of 48 hours between the tests that any number of situations that could come. But I think what we would urge, and it's no different from the general population at large, it's about, you know, trying to do the best you can to limit the risk. But ultimately, you know, you cannot limit the risk entirely. And these are the these are the things that are going to happen. And that's why it's so important that we have the consistent testing that we're having to be able to flag it up so that you can limit any exposure once you get a positive test. Uh, and the good thing is they are um, asymptomatic both cases. So in that respect, there's a positive test. But to be honest, they wouldn't have known unless it was that they were having regular testing. So there's no symptoms. Darren, this is Zach. What's the protocols and the procedures for them to come back into play and join their teammates? Yeah, hi, Zach. Yeah, so the, the MLS has, you know, the medical protocol in terms of returning with, you know, a series of steps before they come back and the, the league will have the sort of full details on what they reveal. But, you know, they'll have to obviously be clear and then come back and perform um, certain tests before they come back into training. Darren, hi, this is uh, Jeff Schultz. Um, I, everybody's obviously weighing this, you know, this health thing versus obviously the economically, everybody wants sports to come back. Emotionally, everybody wants sports to come back. And then you have this other side of the reality of kind of what's going on out there right now, not just in soccer, but everywhere. I'm just wondering, you personally, have you struggled with this at all as you've looked at the landscape? Have you asked yourself, do you, should we really be doing this at all? Uh, hi, Jeff. Good to see you. Yeah, look, I mean, I think everyone's been doing it from you know, from a personal perspective, from the league's perspective. I think, you know, from my my side of things, having seen what's happened with Bundesliga, with Premier League coming back, um, you know, from that European angle, given my background and people I've been talking to, I think, you know, clearly you want to be doing it safely, and that's the, the top priority. But I think if you can do it, and you can do it safely, it is something that gives gives people a lift and look at the times now it seems crazy to be talking about sports but I think probably more than ever there's that factor that, that having the sports and having that ability to to watch that those games taking place does give a little bit of an emotional lift so I think that you know on balance for me MLS is doing the right thing trying to come back I think it is the right thing to be doing it in a contained environment I think we're probably seeing that now as over the last couple of weeks, what's happening around the country is that this could be the safest way to sort of get back to play um, before you then go back to your local market. So I'm excited about the concept. I think it's going to be fun having it in a World Cup environment where for 16 consecutive days, you've got a, a number of games getting played. Um, but again, you know, the important thing is that we have the, you know, the safety and we make sure that we're all following the protocols. And I think, you know, with the couple of positive tests we've had here, it just shows that this is to be expected. We can't expect there not to be positives, but the key is going to be how the protocol works now as we go forwards. And hopefully this is something that, you know, Lance United will have dealt with it. We'll be able to go to Orlando um, and everything will be OK. Darren, Jonathan Tannenwald from the Philadelphia Inquirer. Um, you talked earlier in this call about how you're satisfied with the protocols in Orlando with the bubble. And I want to ask specifically about the part that, you know, the hotel staff, the bus drivers and people like that um, are not going to be in the bubble. They're going to be going home at the end of the day. Um, are you satisfied with that part of it? Because that that's the part of it that seems to be the risk of 
of the virus potentially coming into the bubble, quote unquote. Yeah, Jonathan, look, and it's, um, you know, it's for the, the experts, not for me to sort of comment specifically on the, you know, the medical protocols, but but clearly, you know, that was talked about, that was discussed, that was um, the concept that was, that came up with. And remember, within the, the people in the 45 to, you know, 48 that are traveling there, they'll obviously have had all the testing before they get into the bubble. In terms of those Disney employees, you know, they're all going to be socially distanced wearing PPE. So it is going to be in a scenario where the medical experts are comfortable that that is, you know, sufficient because they're not actually in contact, and that's perhaps a little bit of the um, the dislocation in people's minds. Like the, the players and the group that travels, they have to be, you know, certain that by the time you get to Orlando, you're in that bubble because they're actually in contact. They're in training. They're in close contact, and as you know, in soccer, you can't stop that happening when you're playing matches. But as far as those Disney staff that are coming in, they will be able to have social distancing, have the PPE, have the testing with temperatures before they come in and the, the various uh, protocols that they have in place. So that's the, you know, the background to how that decision was made. And you know, the experts advising at all levels are comfortable with it, NBA with a similar uh, level as well. And I think you know, the comfort that you also have is you, know, you are dealing with Disney in terms of a, you know, a company that that are, you know, world renowned in terms of their protocols and their way of um, dealing with sort of uh, these type of issues. So I think, you know, that adds a level of comfort. Hey, Darren, I have two transfer related questions for you, please. Uh, Ezekiel Barco told an outlet in Argentina that Fiorentina had contacted his agent. I was curious if they have contacted y'all. Uh, or any club in France. Those were the specific ones he mentioned. And is the club bringing in uh, Jurgen Dom from Mexico? Hi, right, Doug. Second one first, because that's easy. But, you know, we don't comment on any players coming in, so that's the answer to that one. I mean, on the first one, it's it's <laughs> it's interesting because we usually have the silly season in the summer, and of course, because there's really not a lot going on at the moment, we're going to have, I think, the most silliest of seasons. But, but the reality is, as you know, Ezekiel is a quality player. Um, he's under a long-term contract with Atlanta United, and you know we've had no clubs reach out to us at the moment in terms of him. Hey Darren, <clears throat> um, are players required to log their movements in terms of where they go, who they interact with when they're away from the training facility? So as far as the players, you know, we have the, the consistent testing, and you know they do have. Um, we've given them the advice on best practices for them to do in the in the background but like I say we we don't have that ability to control the players outside of our environment save that we can obviously give them the you know the, the advice that we would give everybody out there you know to practice the same procedures so that's how it's dealt with in, in our respect with the players well it's not about control I mean obviously you know you can't control where they go but are they required to tell you where they've been yeah, so they do certainly, you know, keep a log on, you know, where they're going, so that if we have these issues, we're able to follow up with them. Okay, thanks. Just going to remind everybody to put your lines on mute, getting just a little bit of background noise. Do we have anything else for Darren? Hey, Darren, uh, Paul Tenorio here. Um, question that's a little bit further looking down the road but if FIFA were to set what well, set dates for clubs um or for international games rather and, and you were to have players called up to to games what would the club's take be I know typically you have to release players during a FIFA window but if it now gets to a point where let's say they leave to go play in Mexico or a qualifier in Brazil and they would have to be quarantined for two weeks coming back based on local law or, or U.S. law. How would the club handle something like that? Do you think it's something where where the club would, would push back against FIFA and having to release players in those windows? Hi, Paul. Yeah, look, I mean, <laughs> that's a tricky hypothetical. I mean, I think the reality is uh, we are dealing in uncharted territory here so I think we just have to actually know what the position was in in those circumstances but look some of the hypotheticals you raise are clearly issues that you know you have a 
you have a FIFA transfer window, that's when you're expected to release a player for that period. I think obviously there's going to be some discussions generally worldwide if that actually means that by doing that, you're also going to have to not have them available for a further period of time. Uh, a follow-up, if I could, uh, Darren. Um, based upon these two recent COVID tests, you had a couple of players before Lorenowitz and Guzan who were very concerned about this Orlando tournament. Have any players on the squad come and told you now they do not want to go to Orlando? They will simply be take the holdout status and pay the fines rather than go down there and play? No, Doug, like I say, I mean, look, the reality is, you know, with our players, they're coming in, you know, they're, they're professional. They understand that this is part of the procedure. And I think, you know, to be honest, like I said, this is sort of reassuring because it shows that the testing is working and it's limiting any potential exposure. So I think from that perspective, it's, it's showing the protocols working and that's exactly what we want. So, you know, from that perspective, you know, I think they're just hopeful that we can get back to team training tomorrow because, you know, clearly that was something that from a player perspective, they were really enjoying having it where you were almost back to that normality of having the team trainings that they, they know and love. Got time for just a couple more. Hey, Darren, it's Jose Rodriguez. I have a quick question for you. Um, do you expect these two players to be with the team in Orlando? Yes, I mean, assuming that everything goes according to the protocol, yeah, we would. Thank you. Hey, Darren, I know you can't speak for the league, but is it still the club's intention after this Orlando tournament? Is, is the hope and intention still to continue out the season in home markets, or has anything changed with that plan in the last week or two? No, Mike, at the moment, and again, it's still nothing is confirmed, but the idea is to play the tournament in Orlando and then for you know the clubs to return to home markets with the league and to continue the season. Hey, Darren, Zach, again, um, just how, how's the mood of the two guys? How are they holding up? And what can I, can I guess, can they just working out on their own individually at home to stay in shape so once they clear everything, they can return with the, with the team and still be at that optimum level? Yeah, and again, without going into specifics, like I said, both of the players are asymptomatic. So, you know, from their side of things, it's, you know, it's it's one of those scenarios where, you know, they they feel fine, but they understand why they have to go through the protocol. And I think, you know, they're just keen to, to go through the protocol and get back as soon as they can. All right, everyone. Thanks. Uh, thanks for your time and thanks for joining today. I'll be sending out a recording here as soon as possible. If you have any other questions or follow-ups, uh, be sure to give me a call. Thanks a lot. Thanks, Darren. Thanks, everyone. Stay safe.